the antiderivative can be used to analyze motion. And what we have in this particular problem is an object that is moving along the x-axis. It has an acceleration of a equal to 3t minus 2, where t is the time in seconds. Our distance will be measured in feet. The velocity at time 0 is negative 5, and the position at time 0 is 0. So uh, at time t equals 0, the object is at the origin, and it has a velocity moving in the uh, direction to the left of the origin that is negative. So, so this is basically the kinematics that describe the motion of this object. And what we would like to do is find equations for the velocity and equations for the uh, actual uh, position. And maybe look for a little bit more detail that these functions can give us. So we know that acceleration is actually the instantaneous rate of change of velocity. So we have dv dt is equal to 3t minus 2, or you could just say v prime. And then, of course, we can anti-differentiate to undo the derivative, and then anti-differentiate the 3t minus 2. What we'll do is we'll add up all the constants and put them on one side because we're lazy. And so this is just real simple, add 1 divided by the new power. So we're going to get 3, 2, t squared minus 2t plus an arbitrary constant. And then, of course, we know that v of 0 equals negative 5. So if we substitute 0 for t, all of these numbers or all of these terms zero out, and we just have c1 is equal to negative 5. So we have the constant evaluated, and so our function v of t of velocity is 3 over 2 t squared minus 2 t minus 5. Now, what I want to do is go ahead and analyze the uh, velocity function uh, because what we can see here is that the object will change direction. So we just want to analyze uh, for the zeros of the velocity. That is, we'll use the quadratic formula. What I've done here is I've multiplied through by 2 to get 3t squared minus 4t minus 10, and we just want to analyze the zeros of v of t. Well, if you compute the discriminant, we'll get 16 minus 4 times 3 times the negative 10, as we get from here. And then, of course, the negatives will absorb to give us a plus. And I want to go ahead and factor out an 8 uh, from the 16 here. And, of course, there's an 8 here because there's a, a 2 in the negative 10. So that's going to leave behind a 2 from the 16 and a 15 from this term to give us 8 times 17. But then, of course, 8's not a perfect square, but 4 is. So we'll just run the 2 inside and get 2 times 17, which is 34. That's a positive number. And so we apply the quadratic formula. So we have the opposite of v, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant. That'll give us 2 root 34 divided by 2 times a, which is 2 times 3. Of course, all the uh, 2's absorb, and we're left with a 2 plus or minus root 34 divided by 3. Now, we're certainly only interested in uh, t greater than or equal to 0. Uh, we, we're not interested in t being negative. That makes no sense to us. So we're going to look at t equal 2 plus the square root of 34 divided by 3. And so now we, we see that we will have a, a change in direction. We can an analyze this uh, where we have basically the zero of v, and then, of course, uh, t equals zero, which was, is where we begin when time is measured. So what I've done here is some symbolic calculation. Uh, I'll take a point over here. Uh, I'll just take twice of this. So I'll multiply this by 2 and this by 2 and get 4 plus 2 root 34 over 3. And then I want to take a number uh, between 0 and our 0 here. And so I'll just do half of it. So I'll take half of 2, which is 1, and half of root 34. So that gives me a, a nice set of test points that I can work with symbolically. And now using uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra, we know uh, that our particular equation for v looks like this. So we can factor the 3 and then write t minus our two roots here. 
that is t minus 2 plus root 34 over 3 times t minus 2 minus root 34 over 3. And now we can substitute both of these numbers here. So we want to check both of the factors. So now when we substitute into here, uh, we see the one half, uh, one half times the square root of 34 is very much overtaken by the negative root 34. So that uh, particular factor will be negative. And now when we check this factor, plus, excuse me, minus minus gives us a plus root 34, and that certainly adds to the one half root 34, and the uh, one minus uh, the two doesn't really have any impact. That's a positive term. And so the plus times the negative gives us a negative. And so what we're seeing here, and I'm, I've kind of jumped the gun a little bit, once we compute the uh, position function, we will know that the position function is actually decreasing here. And so since the uh, velocity is negative here, we know that the object is moving to the left. So we're killing two birds with one stone here. And now, of course, when we check this factor, 4 plus uh, 2 times square root of 34 over 3. So when we check here, we see everything works out really well. 2 times root 34 and the negative root 34. And then, of course, the 4 minus the 2, all positive numbers. So we get plus here. And then for the second factor, even, even better, we've got the, the minus minus, which gives us the plus root 34, and we add a 2 root 34 to that, and that gives us all the positive we need. So again, in this side, uh, or to the right of this particular zero here, we have a positive. So we know that the, velo uh, excuse me, the velocity is positive and that the object is moving to the right. And then if we think about the position function, we know that the position function would be increasing here. Okay, so now basically what we see is the object changes direction at this value of t. And if you like, we can say that it moves to the right for t greater than 2 plus root 34 over 3. So that's just analyzing uh, the function velocity and then, of course, making an allusion to the position function. But now we can get position just by knowing that the instantaneous rate of change of position is actually velocity. So we set this derivative equal to the velocity function here. And now to find the position, we just anti-differentiate. Again, the antiderivative undoes the derivative. That's a beautiful uh, process that we have that we're going to see later in the fundamental theorem of calculus. So again, this is all add 1 divided by the new power. So when we divide by the 3, adding, the, uh, adding 1 to 2, uh, that will absorb this 3 and give us 1 half 2 cubed. And then, of course, when we add 1 divided by the new power, we absorb the 2 and we just get minus t squared. And then, of course, the minus 5 just anti-differentiates to minus 5t. And then we have an arbitrary constant, which we, we label differently. Not, not that it has to be labeled differently. It just makes it a little bit easier not to confuse things. And now, of course, uh, at time t equals 0, uh, the position is 0. That is, the object is at the origin. And so that zeroes out, zeroes out all the terms except for C2. So C2 must be zero. And so we have a, a formula for our position function, which is one half t cubed minus t squared minus five t. And I just summarize this here because now we actually did this before we got here because we're doing this problem in the opposite direction. Uh, here we have a critical uh, number of, of the position function. And so what we can see using increasing decreasing theorem that now between zero and two plus root 34 over three, this interval, the function is decreasing. That is, that is the, the position function is decreasing. And then here uh, for values of t larger than t plus root 34 over three, we see that the function is increasing. So again, when you think about the cubic function, it's decreasing, and at this point here, you have a relative minimum, and then it increases again. Now, of course, there's more to this function than just the positive values of t or the zero values of t, but they have no relevance to this problem. So don't, don't be taken by looking for this uh, zero here with the negative radical. Well, it's a negative number and it makes no sense for t. But now you can see 
that the antiderivative is a marvelous tool uh, in conjunction with the derivative to analyze uh, the uh, kinematics that you see in physics and engineering. And we are done.